I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Noor Al Huda. <laughs> Those are weaknesses. We don't tell people my weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, like Sounds I about right. right. Yeah. Yeah, like, I got you. It's dangerous. <laughs> I'm told I don't know how to search very well. <laughs> I have a goldfish memory. Make sure you don't forget this. This yeah, is really right? good. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I got this. I got this. I remember now. <laughs> I shouldn't be there. Because <laughs> it's distracting her. What was I saying? I got distracted. <laughs> I knew, but I was giving you a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what a generous soul I brought today. <laughs> Breaks her for the week. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> I really enjoyed this. I'm really glad you did. did. I'm it glad you did. Fruitful. Have you ever taken the time to reflect back on a challenging time in your life? Maybe it was a setback, a heartbreak, or you faced a dead end to what seemed like your then goal and dream. Only now, through reflection, you realize what my guest will share with you today, that it didn't happen that way, it happened a better way. My guest grew up in Canada. While going to school, she had this natural gravitation for the stage. She also was fortunate enough to have a personal coach who guided her and polished her to be stage ready. My guest had initially set her intentions to go to university and do something like nursing or psychology. Only she ended up graduating with a BA in communications, media and film from the University of Windsor in Canada. Might I add, with honors. She also got her master's in educational leadership from the University of Concordia in the US. Quite the different path from what she thought she was going into. My guest did her stint as a radio show host. She worked in the corporate world. And then one day in 2016, she had hit rock bottom. Coming out of this rock bottom, she made a decision. One way ticket to Dubai. Nothing waiting for her here, no plans, just a one way ticket to Dubai. My guest today is a motivational speaker, communication expert, a writer, and also a social media influencer. Not of the mundane, but a voice for positivity, growth, and well-being. Beyond her commanding presence on stage, my guest is commanding the attention of many around the world because of her engaging messages of positive energy, making the most of our God-given potential, and learning how to better communicate with ourselves and others in order to be better as human beings and also lead our best lives. So whether you're at rock bottom, are fluffing around in life, or are projecting towards your goals and dreams, there are enlightening thoughts that were shared in the sit down that you will find as invaluable lessons. Buckle in, you're in for a treat. This is How Do They Do It? I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Noor Al Huda. Thank you for making it. Thank you for having me. I'd love to get your your thoughts, advice for someone who might be lost. Mm -hmm. They're seeking answers, or maybe someone like yourself ten years ago. I think I have three different advices. Okay. Okay. Um, one is the quote that I live by. Go on. And that is, I love quotes. Yeah, and that is, oh, I, I made it up. <laughs> and that is, God's plan is better than your plan. That is something that I remind myself of. So, for example, let's say that you're striving and you're, you have a certain target and you have a certain goal that you're striving to get to or a certain image in your head of what success is or how you imagine yourself um, in a certain job or with a, with a person that you want to be with or whatever it is. Um, that image that you have in your head that you think is ideal or you think is your way of being happy in life is may not be may not be the ideal image may not be um, the the best way to live so that's your plan but huh. God's yeah yeah not please yeah. yeah God's plan that he has for you mm. um, will always be better so if something good happens to me I'm like uh, Usually, I probably would have imagined it a different way. Yes. Or would have wanted it a different way. Mm. But it usually happens better than I imagined. Yeah. 
and you know, if it actually happens, it happens better than I imagine. I'm like, see, God's plan is better than mine. And if something not good happens to me, um, and I'm feeling, you know, um, in despair and uncertain, I always remind myself that God's plan is better than mine. He has something better saved for me. So it keeps me strong. Um, how do you, but how do you implement this, right? Because we know a lot of things, right? Yeah. So God's plan is better than mine. Mm -hmm. That's the quote? Yeah. It's her quote, which is excellent, <laughs> Not right? that it's like an incredible quote. No, but it's the, yeah, sim it's but, the sometimes yeah. it's the very, it's the simplistic mm -hmm. thought that resonates with you, right? Yes. But I can look at, when you say this, it really hits home mm -hmm. with the 39-year-old Kev, right? But the 20-year-old Kev had an image of getting out of university as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a middle-class family, becoming successful, becoming rich, living the life mm -hmm. and all that needs to happen before 27 because 27 at that point was way too old mm -hmm. that kid would have found it hard to understand what you're saying to right. actually comprehend what you're saying even though he was a believer in god mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so it's not that there is a disbelief in god a believer in god but not one who actually understands us how would you help someone like say me at that stage to actually fully realize it the way we do today uh-huh okay so i think the best way to do that is to be able to keep conscious and aware of the different things that happened in your past mm -hmm. that you wanted to happen a certain way, but then realized after that, oh, thank God it didn't happen this yes. way, right? Um, so let's say, for example, you wanted a certain program at university and um, it didn't work out for you. You chose a different route. Four years later, you, re you realize this is better now because, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not what I wanted, but I can do something else that I want, right? So keeping that past beside you in these little circumstances um, that you went through that made you realize that God chose the better thing for me will make that belief grow bigger in you. Yes. And if, if you haven't reached that um, level of experience yet or haven't seen better things coming, then you need to hear about different people's stories yes. where they wanted something and then God chose something else for them and it was better. Mm. You need to keep hearing about how um, other people had a plan, didn't go their way, God chose something else, and now they live a much happier life. The more you see those examples, the more you keep aware and conscious of those examples that happened to you if they did, the more you're going to get or have that belief instilled within you. Mm. And belief at the end of the day is belief in the unseen. Right, so you're you're believing in things that you haven't seen yet. Yes. So if we haven't tried doing everything um, and trying out our different skills, we're, we won't be sure how much we're capable of. Yes. Right. So we have to believe in the unseen. Yes. Right. And I'm just, I'm going to mention a verse if if that's okay sure. from the Quran actually. So in one of the verses, God said, um, believe, uh, and then right after believe, do. So he said, You can say it in Arabic yeah, if you like. By that time of the day, and a person is in loss, okay, except those who believe. Okay? So, like by the afternoon, right? Yeah, except those who believe. A person is in loss except those who believe. Sure. Right? He didn't say except those who believe in God. He said believe because belief encompasses belief in everything that's mm. unseen, mm. right? God and the capabilities that he gave you. Mm. So once you believe, right after that, accept those who believe and then do. Do righteous deeds. Do So action doesn't come before belief, before true belief, right? So the point I'm trying to get at is that belief within you that God's plan is better than mine needs to come blindly. Like you can't just say, um, and it'll grow within you. It won't come in one day. It'll mm. grow within you and become engraved within you as soon as you start um, realizing your life experiences through them, everything you wanted, it didn't happen that way. It happened a better way. Yes. Or someone else wanted this. It happened for them a better way. So probably the same thing will happen. Yes. Why? Because God created you and he loves you. Mm. Right? He created me and he loves me. Um, and when someone, or that love um, is, is going to, you know, yeah, make I mean, you happy. What you said really touches on really interesting things. Belief 
in the unseen, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what belief is. If you can already see it, you don't need to believe it because you're already seeing it's it. It's right there, right? Right. So it is a, a belief in the unseen, and then taking, you know, having that consciousness and also reflecting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On just looking at your life, because even by the time you were twenty, right, you would have had a few years of consciousness mm -hmm. for you to be able to look through, no matter what it is, you know, mm -hmm. just even the small things in life where you yeah. can go, okay, this is what I wanted. It didn't work out. Ah, it's interesting that. Yeah. Even though it's gone in a completely different direction, yeah, this is a far better result than I would have even imagined. Exactly. And then, obviously, as you grow, and yeah, and that's, sorry, no, no, and and that's and that's the second advice I wanted to give is yes, God's plan is better than mine. And second is believe you can do it because if there is a, the slightest, um, you know, the slightest disbelief in your abilities that you can do something, doubt or a, a, the slightest doubt, you're just gonna sit back and say, maybe I won't be able to do it. It's it's like having a Rolls Royce without fuel and it's just sitting there. And How do you bolster really... that belief then? Once you start believing yeah. that um, your capabilities are limitless, that the way God created you is, once you start seeing the, the incredible things that humans are capable of, mm. um, you'll believe that yeah, I, I can I can probably do this, but it won't happen until you try. Yeah. So once you try and succeed and try again and succeed, you'll build that motive. It's mm. a momentum that keeps going. And yes. then you'll be able to realize that, so I was capable of doing this once, I could probably do this again. That's right. Right? So believe you can do it um, in order to keep that motivation and drive going. Yeah. If you have the slightest doubt, you're going to sit back and say, maybe I won't be able mm. to do it, so why do it anyway? Why start? Why try? Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment, they go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing and it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things, a good website, traffic, and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what M Dojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. Do you have any like um, habits or routines or things that you do to help with that process? Right, because we are what we do repeatedly. Mm -hmm. First of all, like I said, belief is belief in the unseen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to get into all being all religious and stuff, but being spiritually healthy yes. will lead you to be mentally and um, physically and um, psychologically healthy. Mm -hmm. And this is my this is my the school I believe in. Mm -hmm. If you're spiritually healthy, um, you've got uh, you, you've got this thing in your subconscious always telling you that it, it's a form of hope. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, that things are going to get better, although you're not sure. But you your complete reliance on a bigger power mm. on God, you know that things are going to get better because you have that strong, strong belief. So keeping that spiritual connection with God makes. It, um, strengthens that belief in yeah. me. Okay, and also I do a lot of self discipline, and I talk to myself a lot. Okay. Yeah. It's, like we, I, we I, all I, do. Like. Yeah, and and um, literally, like I look in the mirror and be like, "What does wrong with you? Like, okay. are you serious right now? Remember when this happened and this happened? Remember how you got over it? Remember why it happened? Remember when God did this for you and then took this away from you and gave you this?" Remember, so you go up to the yes. mirror and you consult yourself. Yes, yes, good stuff. And and it feels like it doesn't feel like I'm talking to myself. It feels like another version of me is talking to me, yeah. and and that belief and hope keeps keeps pushing me. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge believer in having hope, 
having faith. Uh, I pray a lot just, you know, lying in bed and mm -hmm. just when I'm walking around sometimes in silence, I'm actually praying because whatever I've been able to achieve, mm -hmm. I never believe that I've been the kind of person who it's been because of strategy. Mm. I'm not that guy, okay. right? It's not been strategy. There have been dark, dark times where we lost everything, where I was just mentally or emotionally completely depleted. And the only thing that kept me going was just the hope of a better day and mm -hmm. having faith that things will work out. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I'm in this shitty position or situ shitty situation yeah. or shitty feeling, whatever it is. That's the blind belief. Right. I just know that, or I'm hoping hope, yeah. Yeah, that it was, it's going to be a better day. And wow, did that pull me through. Of course. Right? Of just, course. No idea. Absolutely no idea. Yeah. Just, I know that something will pull me through. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then later on, after your, your life experiences um, take you places, it becomes easier because you look back and say, I was able to get over that. I yeah. was able to accomplish that. Uh, I'll get over it. I'll do it. So you start, like you said, not giving. <laughs> not giving. <laughs> yeah, it's true. If you know me, yeah. you know it's true. Um, how did you deal with the quarantine? Because the world went into a complete lockdown, mm -hmm. right? and you know, if anyone who's lived a few years knows that the world, I mean, the pandemic is just one form of crisis. There right. is the economic crisis. If you're in places like the States, there is a social crisis. The world, this is life, mm -hmm. right? We just mm -hmm. went into something that was unfamiliar for many, and right. it won't probably be the last time. I'm keen to know how you utilize that time, because mm -hmm. it's a question I've been you know, it's, it's a topic of conversation when I'm working with clients mm -hmm. and I'm rubbing sh shoulders with interesting folks and I'm just seeing what they did during that pandemic right. in the hope that it inspires others. Right, right. So I'm a writer. Like, I write my content. Mm -hmm. um, and then I and then I speak it. So uh, every writer knows that solidarity alone time is key and having that um, space to write, to research, to do your reading and writing is... Um, it's much 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 needed yes so I guess that's the advantage for me um, that I was able to utilize you got uninterrupted periods of writing yes yeah. yes um, and that was good for me and not gonna lie to you there's a, I'm an ambivert which is an extrovert mixed with introverts mm -hmm. um, so the introverted side of me enjoyed that yes. at the beginning and then I went crazy. I'm like, that's it. Get me out of this. <laughs> I want to see people. Yes. Yeah. After I finished my writing and finished what I needed to, like, you know, what I needed to do in my own space, yeah. I was like, okay. But um, for sure, I like that um, kind of space that quarantine gave me. Yeah. And not only that, um, people were able to realize how important utilizing social media tools is and being able to deliver information through and content and um, different brands and different agencies and different were able to reach out more to me uh, because I'm more active through the these platforms yes so uh, I got even busier interesting say. since um, you touched on realizations did you have a realization that you found was interesting about yourself during this period? Because this was a period of awakening for a lot of uh -huh, folks uh -huh. where they realized, hey, like some things are really not important. I thought they were important, yeah. they're not. Or hey, those meetings we were having was an absolute yeah. waste of time. Yeah. Or hey, you know, you name it, there was a whole heap of things. You know, the little things in life mean so much. Were you surprised by, yeah, perhaps the fact that you got busier online? Did you expect it to happen or did it catch you off I guard? I didn't expect it to happen. Right. Um, I expected that everything would slow down and um, I would kind of go along with that. I mean, Zoom is a platform. Mm. You know, everyone jumped on Zoom. It ended up becoming, within a space of a couple of months, a company much more valuable than like six or seven American airlines put together. Wow, so yeah. here's a company that's only a few years old mm -hmm. and through a pandemic got everyone realizing, hey, how do we communicate? Let's go on this thing called Zoom everyone started zooming around and suddenly you had a company that within 60 days the whole company valuation went to like 40 something yeah. billion yeah that that is something that i think is very advantageous mm. um especially for me and the values i carry which are that um i believe that we should not be in one place in the world all the time the world realizing that 
we need to utilize these ways, different ways of communication, of you know, long distance communication. I mean, nothing beats face to face communication yes. and face to face meetings. But um, Zoom makes it a lot easier when you can see someone face to face. And um, I'm I'm back and forth between Canada and Dubai, and I feel like it's going to be much easier for me to be able to go back home and still get work done wherever. Um, and I feel like now that the world has realized that we need to pay closer attention to that or these platforms and utilize them more, it's going to be more advantages for me mm. to an extent for sure. The coronavirus, um, like a hundred percent was, was positive for us mm. in different ways. Yes. Yeah. You had three pieces of advice. Yes. The third one. Yes. Um, the third one was, um, if someone, or if you are, okay, trying to reach a certain target, okay, and you have you have a goal, and or let's say a short term, you have a, a job in your mind that you really, really want, okay, and you feel like you, you'll be happy once you get it, okay, or you have, you know, a, a person in your life and you feel like if I marry that person, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy. It, it's just a target, a goal that you have, right? Um, if something happens, that's going to be happiness for me. Right. Or, no, like, I'm just saying, let's say that, you know, you're driving you're, towards you're something. driving towards something, okay? okay? Um, and you're really, really striving to get there, and you're doing everything you can to get there, but you keep feeling that there's just too many obstacles, mm. and it's taking you much longer, and you're going slow motion, and you keep failing, Think of it as a mountain, okay, mm -hmm. and your goal's on top of that mountain, or your target is right there, and it's your mountain. Think about the way that you're going up that mountain, um, and think of it as there are a whole million other ways that you can go up the mountain. As opposed to the one way. Exactly. You need to be flexible and adaptive and um, have that open-mindedness where and creativity to realize that there isn't just that one way for me up the mountain. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying change your target. Your target is still there and it is your mountain. You may have to change the means. You may have to change your mindset, your network, the yes. people around you, the path. It may be harder to go a different route, but it will still get you there, mm. right? So instead of believing so hard, like so much, for example, that this is my happiness and in order to, like this is my target and in order to get to that target, I need to have this job. Maybe you don't. Maybe That's you need right. to take a different route. Yes. Maybe you need to be in a different place. Um, so always think of being on a mountain and having that creativity. And I think it all goes back to, to thinking outside the box and having that creativity and being open-minded yes. to realize that your mountain has so many different paths. Um, that's, so that's really powerful, right? Because we do get especially for those who are goal oriented yes. right we're so stubborn about achieving yes. that goal yeah. we forget that it's good to be stubborn about achieving that goal or going to the top of your mountain mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be the way you think exactly. it is going there to be there are so many different doors that you Sometimes don't even we know about stand up and like we stand in front of a door and it's locked and we're just like on that doorknob yeah. and we just try to open it but not realizing there are so many other doors we can try yeah. to go through. They might not be so favorable to us at the beginning, but they'll get us where we want later on. Mm. So be flexible enough, creative enough, open-minded enough to realize that there are so many different ways up your mountain to get to your target. That's really good. I want to I want to peel that onion on, okay. on this one. Is, peel away. So, so if someone says, I love your three points, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start believing. Uh, I'm going to start believing that God's way is better than my way mm -hmm. and have that kind of faith. Mm -hmm. The second one was? The second one was believe you can do it. That's so having, your fuel. That's your fuel. So have that belief, mm -hmm. right? That you're so capable. W without a doubt. Without a so doubt. So one and two kind of like interacting yes. with one another. The third one is understand that with, with one and two, your goal, your mountain, if this path doesn't work, you need to make some changes. Yes. Be creative. Yeah. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals, we see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy, they do so much, they're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org 
forward slash blog, the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin increase motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value. If you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it, Kevin Increase Motivation. It will be the first link that pops up or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. Help us with how can someone who's watching or listening mm -hmm. If they want to go, okay, I want to do this. How do I become more creative? So maybe some tips or thoughts on yeah. creativity, yeah. Uh, mindset, mechanism. Sure. So let's start with creativity or so how to be like, more creative. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, I was reading about creativity and the different things that um, interpret, interpret whether you're a creative person or not or how to become a creative person is by understanding what creativity is and, and how to be creative. So one of the signs of creativity is solving something before knowing that this is the right solution so your intuition tells you you're going to do it this way you're going to go with the solution you have um, no idea whether the outcome is going sure to be achieved if this solution is the right one you didn't right. read a book and it's a strategy that told you this is the right solution do it so usually creative people will just use you know kind of their intuition it, it, there's trial and error in that for sure but um they they're very intuitive so they'll use their intuition to kind of go ahead and solve something without before being sure of the solution. So this means that subconsciously they're okay with it failing. Yes, for sure. They're yeah. very open to failing because that will formulate more creativity for them. Yes. Um, and a stronger intuition. Mm. Without failing, the intuition is low. You're not sure what's going to happen next. So the, the information in your subconscious is not strong enough to give you that intuition mm. of what's happening next mm. time or what's going to happen. Yes. Creative people are um, slow to analyze. So yes. they'll take the information and analyze it really well, but they'll just find the solution. They'll just be quick to solve. Like it won't take them a long time to solve. The, they'll take a longer time to analyze. Yeah, gather all then, the info. Mm-hmm. And but then, then solve. Well, okay. They may not go by the strategy or by the book all the time. Okay, they know something needs to happen a certain way, or this is what the book tells them, but they decide to, to kind of go their own route. Mm. Um, they're very open to change. Creative people need to be open to change and exploring. Um, they love art and beauty. Mm. So if you are not a fond of art and beauty, um, you need to force yourself to see the colors and realize that um, different parts of your brain are going to light up when yes. you see that uh, you know type of music or different art. It'll it'll give you stronger uh, creativity. Yes, and now when you're saying creative people, if the person is watching or listening to this and mm -hmm and they think I'm not creative, right? You can be creative. Course, These are tips that anyone can yes. implement and as a result of implementing yes. it, you become a more creative person. Exactly, it, it's gonna take time and yes. it's gonna build with momentum and the first time you do something before being sure of the solution, you're gonna be uncertain and scared and mm. have fear that it might not work out, but you're forcing yourself to get out of your comfort zone. You're forcing yourself to do something different mm. and that is gonna build your creativity. Therefore, you're going to be taking a different route up your mountain. Um, have you been, have you always been creative or can you give us a, a time where you had to implement this process mm -hmm. to arrive at an outcome? Yeah, so uh, one thing about me, I'm in, I'm indecisive okay. to an extent. I started to train myself to make quick decisions. I was going to say for someone who does quite a bit, mm. I would have never picked indecisive. Yes. Okay. And over the years, I decided I'm not. I'm going to stop being a perfectionist because that's also something I have. Um, creative people usually aren't perfectionists. So your baseline was indecisiveness and a perfectionist. <laughs> Those Whoops. are weaknesses. We don't tell people my weaknesses. <laughs> yes. Um, no, because this is real, yeah. right? Because if I look at you today, I'd be like, she must, yeah, she must be decisive. She's super creative and she's got heaps coming out. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's the total which opposite. I am. Which you are. But it's interesting <laughs> that you've developed it. Yes, I definitely have. So, like, I, I try to train myself where if there was a decision I need to make, um, it, like, could be as simple as what kind of coffee I want. Do I want a cappuccino or a latte? <laughs> and it, it'll take me a good like five, ten minutes to decide yeah. what I'm in the mood for. Now it's like, 
I can't keep doing that. What is this? That's true. I can you, you, I can you, confirm that earlier on it, it took her less than 30 seconds to choose the espresso. An espresso piece, yeah. yeah. So you train yourself with these little tiny things that mm. go about your day. You go about your day with the encounters. Um, no, I'm going to make a quick decision in this. And then the bigger things also, you're like, no, nope, I'm going to just go with it. I don't know if it's right. Maybe it's not, but I'll just go with it. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's not perfect. I'll go with it. And that builds your intuition. It becomes stronger mm. later on because then you're, you're like, okay, hey, before I did this, your sub, this is all happening in your subconscious because what is intuition? Intuition is a bunch of information stored in your subconscious that your subconscious analyzes for you and gives you this gut feeling. Mm. And you're like... I know I didn't I feel this way because this happened to me before my subconscious is giving me signals so okay I'm gonna do this so you start be, being able to make quick decisions yes so yeah it's it's little trainings that you you train yourself to do mm. yeah speaking of training yes you grew up with a communication your own personalized communication and stage coach mm -hmm. will you take us through that story oh I know what you're saying now okay Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so ever since I was younger, I participated in every speech, every school speech, um, every... Am I answering your question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Every school speech, every poem, every gig, ever since like I was in grade one or grade two. This is something you gravitated to or your communication coach pushed you into? My mother. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, mom. My mother... Um, Excellent job. Yes. Uh, and I was like saying she's such a determined woman yeah so strong and I'm like man I wish I could be like you but she would sit sit me for hours she maybe she may have seen something like I was she going to have, say what was the reason yeah, she pushed I, you to I'm do not these sure things. but she may have seen that I could I could excel at this or I have this talent maybe it was her intuition I don't know okay actually she realized that at school mm. teachers would pick me and then she was like, okay, all right, then we have something, let's work on it. Mm. So she used to sit me and, you know, if I had a gig or a poem or something and like for hours, uh, help me memorize it, help me with my hand gestures, um, my tone of voice, yes. my facial expressions, how I'm, how I'm going to be standing on stage. Mind you, I was like, what, six was years say, old. How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> like six years old, six seven, year old seven, seven year old. Yeah, yeah. Like just, you know. Priceless, man. Yeah, so she um, she really engraved that, uh, I guess you could say, passion mm. to public speaking, or and, and it grew in me. And she was my personal coach ever since I was younger. And even even when I was going through university, like I grew up with that. Like ever ever every year of school, I did uh, the I participated in the speech because in Canada we have like yearly speeches, mm. and they only pick certain people for the finals and semifinals. I was always in the finals. Okay. Um, what was it? So your mom is working with you. You're obviously practicing. Mm. What do you feel helped you kind of break out from the others? So what, what skills did you? develop and then over time you realize this was helping you have an edge because obviously if they're picking you mm. from tens or hundreds of others there must be a few things about you mm -hmm. right. was it the ability that you were able to craft and sentence you know put your words together in better sentences were you you could what, say what it's more you of, a, of, a, of a performance okay a performance a, a talent of performing well so it's also courage. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't have that courage to stand on stage, even if they're even if they're good content creators, even if they're creative in making the the right stories and the right content and, and driving home a good piece of info. They're not courageous enough to be on stage. Yes. So I was, I guess, a courageous little girl that was okay being on stage. Mm -hmm. I actually have an interesting story. Once um, I was uh, I was sick at the hospital. Um, and I had the IV mm -hmm. uh, in my hand, and I had, and it, and I, and there was a really important event. I think I was in grade one or two, um, and there was a really important event. And I had to deliver that um, poem, or so I, I was sleeping at the hospital at that time. You're like and seven or eight, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, my mom had to go to work for a couple hours, so she's like, "I'll be right back." And I'm like, mom, I think I'm fine. I think I can go to school and do the poem. And then she's like, no, we're not doing that. So she was at work and I, I talked to my doctor. I'm like, listen, I have a gig and I really want to do this. Please let me. So he's like, 
So like he made sure everything was seven year old negotiator. Yeah. So yeah. he was like, okay, you know what? I think we can let you go for a couple hours and come back. So I went and I delivered it with the IV in my hand. That like is just, awesome. So I, don't, so I don't have to do it again. And I was like, you know, on stage with an IV needle in my hand, I'm delivering this a is how you do it. Right. And then, um, I just, my mom was shocked. She's like, why did, how did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But clearly you had that, you yeah. had that love for it. Right? I did. Yeah. I did. And it grew even bigger. Mm. Um, but like I said, I think you were asking what differentiated me. Yes. Probably it's yeah. that courage. Yeah. It's that courage. For someone who doesn't have that courage, mm. right? Because now in the, when we were off camera, we were talking about social media, the need for it. We, whether you like it or not, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you are capable and you do have the skill, if you don't, you develop that skill. Mm -hmm. Let's say you do have the skill, but if you don't have the courage, it's going to hold you back. Because it's like having a cafe and no one knows about it. Exactly. Right? You can have the best coffee in the world. And if no one knows about it because you didn't open your shop or you didn't market it, well, then that's on you. Mm -hmm. So you can't use the fact that I'm not courageous as an excuse. If you were to consult this person who's watching or if you were to share some thoughts mm -hmm. to someone who's listening, what would you tell them to do to develop that courage? Thinking that you're not courageous enough, obviously, um, is, is realizing that that is a weakness, mm. right? And a way to overcome a weakness, mm -hmm. um, and, and the best strategy to overcome a weakness is being aware. Mm. Okay? Now, awareness is different than being informed. So you could be yeah. given a list of instructions on what to do to become courageous. Okay. Five tips to become courageous. Right. You could be. You could read a book on how to become courageous. Yes. But is that enough for you to be convinced that you need to be courageous? Clearly not in this day and age where information is plenty. Right. And yet. And many every are person's not different, and every person's mindset is different. Correct. Every person operates different. So the general information given to everyone may work for one person, not the other. Mm. So awareness, though, awareness is knowing the why. Mm. Knowing the why is much powerful than knowing the how. Yes. You know the why first, and then your how will be figured out on your own. Mm. What I mean is, if someone wants to know how or how to be courageous, what they would Google is not how do I become courageous. That's exactly what I would Google. No. What you would Google is what happens in my brain when I am fearful or when mm. I am hesitant. Um, which is the opposite of courageous, right? So you're but figuring this search, out. Yeah, this search is very counterintuitive. Why is it counterintuitive? Because if I'm if I want to learn how to be courageous, my initial thought would be like type in how to be courageous, and the answers will be tips on being courageous, right? Right. This, but are you this going would to, be your search. But are you going to implement those actions? Probably not. Have you heard them before? Yes. Okay. So then you need to find the why. Uh -huh. So this is root, like going to that yes. mountain thing and look for a different path now. Exactly. There's a root cause. Yes. There's a root cause why you're not creative. Mm. Knowing, or sorry, why you're not courageous. Yes. Um, or creative. Oh, correct, yes. Um, knowing that root cause is going to help you figure out how. Okay. And it's going to convince you more. So you're going to be more convinced on um, implementing those actions and overcoming your weaknesses when you know the root cause which is the why so, bef so yeah so before I become courageous or I can become courageous I need to know why I'm not courageous exactly okay. you need to know literally go so deep into knowing what is the physio physiology what yes. happens in my brain what happens to my body to my nerves um, in my brain cells when I'm fearful what is the hormone that is released? Mm. Um, what is the enzyme? What do I feel? Um, when you have that awareness, it's a weapon. Because once you're put in that situation, once you're put in a situation where you're feeling fearful and hesitant and mm. uncertain and you mm. don't have that courage, you'll be more conscious on what's happening in your body. You'll be more conscious on, okay, so right now my nerves are you know, going through this, there is an enzyme in my brain that's being released. You're concentrating more on yourself. So you'll have more power and control over what's going on within you. Mm. And, and that's the, the root cause that you need to figure out in order to know your how. Mm. I really find this interesting because it requires you to not to, to be counterintuitive, right? Mm -hmm. But the analogy you use is great. You got to consider this as a, yes. as a goal. I yeah. want to be more courageous. Yeah. 
and I'm not feeling it right now, perhaps I need to change my mindset or the way I ask the question. Exactly, exactly. Some people, it may work for them knowing the how. Okay, so they're more rational. They take things um, in a more direct way. Mm. Uh, okay, so next time I'll try to implement this step. For being courageous and they have I guess that strength to implement it yeah and they can so they don't they may not need to know the why yes but for those who are striving and are still finding it more difficult um, to overcome a certain weakness knowing the why is going to definitely help them and knowing the root cause is going to be the, the best step because this reminded me of the conversation we had before we started recording and I was telling you that I went through a phase of my life where I didn't perform at my best for a few years mm -hmm. because I was heartbroken. Right. right. And then we, the conversation kind of yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't know how it went on, but it <laughs> went to the point where if I want to get through a heartbreak, yes. my initial or intuitive thing would just be how to get over a heartbreak. No. And there's plenty of information yeah. of people telling you how to deal with your ex. Exactly. You know, what you need to do. Yes. And that's not the answer. No. So basically, let's say a girl, okay, is trying to get over a guy. Um, who she she thinks is so in love with first thing she should Google is not how to get over a guy she should probably Google what is the difference between love and attachment um, mm. what happens when we are attached to someone and then she'll realize okay love is a whole bunch of hormones mainly it is oxytocin mm. oxytocin that is the love that hormone, hormone right? that is released in our mind when we're attached to someone. Mm. Okay, so before I get to that, rationally, obviously they didn't work out for a reason. Rationally, she knows he's not the right one. That's right. why they broke up. But we're not logical creatures, exactly. right? We're not. So my mom used though, to say when when I went through a first breakup, she used to go, Kev, just remember that even if you had lost your dog, you would miss him. Right. I'm like, that's so cruel, Mom. It's not working. <laughs> I love your mom. She has a point. She's a gangster, right? But it's, that's the logical aspect. Yes. Exactly. How I'm feeling is not logical. Exactly. Because you have all this information. Like I said, you're given these instructions. You have all this information. Your rationale knows the truth. Mm. But what is the physiology? What is happening in my mind? Why am I still attached? Why do I still miss this person? Mm. You, once you realize that it is a hormone, an mm. enzyme mm. that is addictive, oxytocin, once it's released, once it's gone, you go through withdrawal symptoms. Mm. Those withdrawal symptoms cause you then to feel that pain, to feel that, that you miss someone. That awareness, being aware of that, will make you realize that it's all in your head. Mm. It is a power that you can control. Just not it is, it's, it's not, not them, linked. it's here. Exactly, yeah. it's not linked to them. So then once it's not linked to them, the, the control is you. You control it, not mm. them. You control your feelings not the relationship with them it's just you your head mm. so it becomes a lot more um easier to mm. overcome the challenge or the obstacle or the attachment or whatever it is so that's awareness yeah, that's really good awareness is a weapon that's a good one yes. awareness is a weapon i like For that sure. if anyone that's following you knows this if mm -hmm. they're not you should be following her the link is there um <laughs> You're very crisp and captivating in front of camera. Thank you. Which is true. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would love to know what are what have you done to get to that level in terms of skill? Again, in line with the fact that the reality is today, every single person, regardless of your profession, mm -hmm. who you are, where you are, uh, what you do, and so forth, age bracket, none of it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, you kind of need to be in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. It's beyond just the stage, right? Yes. Today, the stage is the camera. For sure. And everyone has it and mm -hmm. everyone needs to use it. Yes. What would be some things that perhaps I was going to say tips, but now that you brought up awareness, yeah. what, what do people need to be aware of to help become better in terms of crispness in front of the camera, in terms of being captivating to engage their audience? Mm -hmm. Because that's how you've built something that's yes. amazing. Yes. And I have no doubt you're, go you're going to continue to skyrocket because you Thank engage you. the audience. It's true, like mm -hmm. you engage the audience with what you're creating. Um, I'd love for someone who's watching this or listening to this to be able to get some awareness and thoughts. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little personal. So if sure. you watch my first video, you'll know for sure awesome. that it was a personal training that I had that going back to courage. Mm. I was courageous enough to know that it's, my first video is going to be horrible. I'm going to hate my voice. I'm going to hate the way I look. But that's fine because that's just the first video. 
once you see the feedback and you look at yourself and you hear your voice and you do a second one and a third one and a fourth one and you become less camera shy you'll realize that it's just a personal training and it's okay to be horrible the first video even even realizing the right colors to look on that that you need to to wear for the camera yes. or um, where you need to look or the tone of voice and you're still going to keep repeating a million times to get the right video, but you're going to become less and less camera shy. Mm. So I would say stay aware of the fact that um, it's going to come after the 50th video, okay. not the first. But be willing to do the to first do it, and accept be, it. Exactly. Yeah. Be courageous enough to do it and accept it. Mm. Yeah. And just know, like before you do the video, just don't say, I got to make this so perfect. It's, yes. it's got to be a good video. Just be like, okay, I'm going to make my first horrible video. This is really good advice. I have a friend of mine and if she's watching, then this is the advice I had given you because she wanted to release a podcast and mm. she's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm going, hey, what you're going to do, I believe is going to be amazing. You at some level must believe that it's going to be amazing. That's why you want to do this podcast. Yes. But you're a perfectionist and that is holding you back. Yeah. Because no matter how much you try, even if you have a, even if you have a multi-million dollar budget, mm -hmm. the first one that you do in a year's time, you're going to look back and you're going to critique the hell out of it. I mean, yes. Hollywood does yes. that. I mean, yes. film directors, Hollywood directors oh laugh at their first movies, mm -hmm. even if they had a multi-million dollar budget. Yeah, nobody starts here. Nobody. Yes. Nobody. Nobody. It's, yeah. So... Just be like, I'm going to do my first horrible video. I'm going to do my first horrible podcast. Mm. It's going to be horrible. And I'm going to love it. And then what did you do? And once you, you, you had that courage to, to, to accept, I'm just going to do that horrible video. Um, honestly, at first, I didn't even know it was going to be horrible. I just Now I think it's horrible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, See, I told you. <laughs> yeah. At first, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I don't care how it's going to turn out. Okay. I'm just going to do it. So, and it wasn't even planned. It was just like that passion that I wanted to deliver um, or wanted to drive a certain message to, to people at home, like drive a certain message home to people. And um, I was like, okay, in order for me to do it right, I need to open my camera and do it on my camera. Uh, am I comfortable doing this? No, but I'm still going to do it. Mm. So it was very casual. Um, I still didn't even have my platforms public yet. It was just friends. Yes. And then, uh, but before that, I was doing my own radio show. So, but again, radio is different than camera. Yes. Yes. Um, so, what was your question? My my question was then once you once you were willing to go, I'm just going to do it. Feedback. Okay. Feedback. Did, feedback from yourself, people. just looking. Okay. Once you see feedback from people telling you that there is something good they took out of it. Uh huh. Um, or even telling you to fix something, it gives you that motivation to do the second one. Okay. Or to keep going. So ask for feedback and don't take it personally, I guess. Criticism or constructive mm -hmm. feedback is more important than positive feedback because it is what will help you create something better. Well said. Yeah, because right? a clap. Yeah. There's not much feedback to the club yeah, except for feeling exactly, good. Exactly, exactly. And there's not much you can take out of it. You're mm. just like, you feel good. It gives you that motivation mm. and that satisfaction yes. to keep going, for yes. sure, which is, is equally important. Yes. But constructive criticism is what will make you stronger. That next level, help right? Help you with growth. Yes. Yeah. So um, I would say uh, for sure it's the feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback um, in this industry of exposing yourself and and knowing how others see you is important. Now, keep in mind that we live in a very critical society. Yes. Um, it might be very harsh and critical at first. It's a personality that also needs to be trained. So a person who, let's say, takes things very personally, in order to go on camera and expose themselves, they need to change that part of their personality. A person who cares too much about what others think will struggle when they go um, on social media or expose themselves mm. because they need to, before going on social media, they need to be aware that um, people are critical. Uh, not everyone's going to like me. Um, I'm going to find a lot of criticism on so many different things. Am I going to take it personally? Is it going to, is, is it going to affect my mental affect health? My, exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they need to, be aware that if they have that side of their personality that's too, taking things too personal, um, making them feel 
you know, drained. Stay away from social media then. Either that or train yourself to not care. Mm. How do you train yourself to not care? Basically, you like I said, talk to yourself. You read the critic you read the 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 criticism, for mm -hmm. example, and you say, the person writing this comment is probably sitting at home in their tank top or whatever or shorts on their on their on their couch yeah bored, this is their outlet bored um they have nothing to do in life mm. and they just they just want to you know give out negativity to others yeah why should it affect me yes um, well said yeah is it going to help me in any way mm. is it constructive can i take anything out of it um is this person important to me in any way mm. if it's an important person can i call them and discuss why mm. if all these questions are answered and you know that then at the end you're going to know that it doesn't really matter yeah it really doesn't as again long it's, as it's a level of awareness right yes yeah and there's going to definitely be people that will love you and support you mm. and see something good that's that's uh yeah. that's coming out yeah. but again one last thing it's not for everyone yes it's not social media public speaking being on camera is not for everyone and that's a fact because charisma it could be both it could be it could be something that you a skill you you grow and train mm -hmm. but it also is something that is is a, a characteristic that's within that you're born with mm. um, I, I, yeah I guess in terms of charisma I'm a believer that at the end of the day some people have that kind of natural vibrance about them yeah you can still work on polishing yourself to a certain mm. level. You can actually be like someone naturally, like Harvey Specter from you know Suits, mm. or you could um, just be someone who can polish their skills to be to become just a better version of themselves. Yes, charismatic within their own For sure. way. For sure, but we can't also deny that there are some people, no matter how much they try, they mm. they cannot have that they do not have that kind yes. of charisma yeah as much as they try mm -hmm. they are built and made for something else their gift is something else exactly yeah because we're all here for a reason we're all here with a goal we're, we're all here to contribute in a certain way mm. um god gifted people certain people with more charisma than others because mm. they're made for a certain thing mm. um so it's okay if you don't have that charisma. Yeah. You're made for something else. Yes. You're built for something else. You'll be charismatic in your own way doing exactly. something else. Exactly. From the outer world, if people don't know you or they don't know your story and they were they are just to look at the double-edged sword that is social media. Sure. Right? They'll just see the five second or thirty second highlight, the show reel. Uh-huh. Things are good. Life is good. Um, in the pandemic. Noor was doing really good. She was even busier when everyone was potentially getting downsized or losing their jobs or having a meltdown of some sort. She was getting busier. Brands are calling her, approaching her. Things are great. Yeah. And I want people to know that you two are human, right? Because there is more to Noor. There is more to anybody yeah. right, than just what you see in the surface mm -hmm. in the hope that it would inspire them. So in 2016, you were still in Canada. Yes. Um, things were going good and then was it suddenly that you decided that I'm going to quit my job mm. and I'm going to get a one-way ticket and I'm going to go to Dubai yeah. and in Dubai there's nothing waiting for me. No, there was nothing. No job, no opportunity, um, nothing. Uh, just had some extended family who I see like every few years but that's it. Take us through the craziness that led to this point and sure. perhaps, yeah. Sure. Okay, so this obviously was a life-changing decision for me yeah. uh, when I decided to, to come to Dubai. And that is because, um, me personally, my uh, life-changing moments or pivotal moments happen when I hit rock bottom. Okay. So when I'm going through something and I have a mental breakdown or I hit rock bottom, and this doesn't happen very often, like, alhamdulillah, not like... The more I grow, the less rock bottoms I hit. Yes. Um, but when I when I go through a moment of despair, and I think that 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 time in 2016 was where everything for me, from all different angles and aspects mm. of my life, I can't even mention just everything was going like downhill, and it was really really bad for me. So slightly before that, how was it? If you can set the scene for us, 
in terms of you know growing up what striving. you were doing okay. i was striving so I, I i landed my first job i was working hard but then it was just the things were gradually just keep getting worse yeah. i guess i want to go further back to okay to perhaps if, if we can start with you perhaps at school and yeah what you thought life is going to be because it will be in line with what yeah. we started off right yeah, yeah, yeah. that god has a better plan and you know where you were in terms of your 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 mindset your growth your yeah. sense of direction and then how things changed sure. and then how it led up to that rock bottom yeah so okay let's let's go back to a little bit to me in high school okay initially i i had a thing for the uh, the medical field like i i had a an appreciation I feel like they're all heroes, from nurses to doctors to the. I feel like the because they're working with the most um, like uh, valuable thing is mm. the human body, right? Yes. And um, I, I always had a sense of appreciation for these people, and I wanted to kind of be a part of it. This is beyond the Arabic thing of you need to be a doctor. That's it's uh, that beyond used to be it. Set no, my by parents families. never. Okay. They were never like, you need to be a dog. Like, I'm telling you, my mom trained me to be on stage. So yes. it was not... This was a genuine appreciation for the craft. Yes. Yeah. And also just an interest. Mm. Because I'm always interested in how we uh, operate as humans. And I wanted to be uh, someone that would contribute to, to someone's health in mm. a way. I guess I had an interest for the chemistry and all that stuff. But ironically, I was horrible in chemistry. Like, just wouldn't... Just wouldn't... Just wouldn't just click. Wouldn't, yeah. It wouldn't bond. <laughs> nothing, right? nothing. All pun intended. Um, and I feel like that's a, that's a part of God's plan. Yeah. I, like, despite the fact that, I mean, I, I would try. I would try so hard because my initially I wanted to be either um, a nurse. And um, nursing is a really good job in Canada. Mm. Um, and then do two years of, of practicing after that and become a nurse practitioner, which is like just right under a doctor of some kind. Or be a medical lab technician. Because um, I just found it interesting because, you know, and it would be a settled career and all that. My mom, again, uh, she was like, you know what, when you're, because we get to apply for three different programs at university. Mm. And she's like, okay, apply for whatever programs you want. And you're not losing anything if you apply for communications and media. Just do it. And I'm like, mom, I'm not going to study it because that's a passion I have. And mm. I can just do that on the side while having an actual career that's more settled for me and, you know, it's just more direct and, and clear. And uh, she was like, just do it. You're not losing Whatever anything. you got to lose, right? Right. Mm. And so I applied for the three different programs. I applied for nursing. Um, and Psychology was the second one? Psychology, yeah. yeah, yeah, because psych was so interesting for me. And communications, media, and film. And I never thought of choosing that the third one. I never thought of going into communication. That was just a favor to mom. Yeah, yeah. And she didn't even like. She didn't say do it. She just said apply. And then I prayed istikhara, which is like when you're indecisive about something. I heard my friends saying that everyone was failing the first two courses of psych because they were super hard. Mm. So my friends in their first semester who did psych were like failing every of the two main courses so I was like hmm, do I want to do that right now and then nursing um, I was like looking more into it and still indecisive so I ended up you know praying and I'm like I'm just gonna do communications just wasn't something like oh I'm in my dream um, you know program and it's something I've always wanted to do it's, it's it's been a passion to be a speaker and on stage but to study it and actually turn it into an actual career wasn't what I had in mind yeah and it wasn't a, a, like a massive end game or plan exactly yeah. in university I always knew um, that I wanted to I, I always I always said this but I never really had a plan mm. um, I said I wanted to travel to Dubai and get experience there Okay. But when it happened, I guess I forgot that kind of plan I had. And when it happened, it happened at a, in, in one day when I was like, I was mentally um, drained. I drained. I had a mental breakdown on this certain day in, in, in a, during a month in, in, in August in uh, 2016. Um, and in one day, I literally booked a one way ticket to Dubai after having a mental breakdown. I'm like that's it. And you're letting go of a of a career at this stage, like no. you, you were you working? Still? I was. I had graduated university, yeah. um, and I was working at that time. Mm. 
And uh, I was like, I, I think I need to be in a different place because just I can't even explain it. All different aspects of life, everything. It's just how you were feeling, yeah. Yeah. So I booked a one-way ticket to Dubai, and it wasn't planned. So it's not like I was applying beforehand and waiting for, um, you know, no. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna leave. So, and I had my parents' support as well, which was good. Um, but that's when I like to bounce after hitting rock bottom. Mm. Some people like to float for a while yes. to cope and heal. And I, I do that. that. That's much needed for us when we go through um, despair and uncertainty and, and a mental breakdown. It's important to heal and feel those emotions. Yes, and as I opposed to denying it, right? Yes, exactly. So I, I give myself that time and space to feel it. And so what do you do in that, in that moment? And then how do you springboard from it? Because this I, is critical, yeah, right? Yeah. So that is the push I get. So I'm like, okay, so again, it's myself. With the mirror? Well, it could be with the mirror. It could be, could be with myself in yeah. my room without a mirror. Just talking Sometimes to Sometimes I don't like to see myself cry if I'm having a mental breakdown. Fair enough, yeah. So um, I, I'm like, okay, so I can go through two routes. This moment can take me either through a dark tunnel. I could stay there for a while. Um, things could get even worse. Or I can make a firm decision to change everything around me. And that's usually what happens when I hit rock bottom. There's no other way but up. What's so, the process like? Because I had a friend of mine and a friend of the podcast. He's an international comedian, mm -hmm. Nitin Marani. And he was saying that it's important to experience the emotion in its totality. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that we don't do, and he was talking about individuals in his field as well, as artists, as comedians, because they're looking for the next punchline, Right. They're just constantly going through the emotion without actually going through the emotion properly. Mm -hmm. And over the years, he's learned to, to realize the importance of, you know, because we're all humans, right. right? Actually going through the emotion in its totality. Feeling it, yes. Telling yourself it's okay to feel it. Exactly. I'm a human. I can feel this way. Yes. I'm allowed to feel this way. So did you do that? Yes. Um, and obviously, it, it took time for me to understand how to do that. Yes. Um, but what I usually do, it, I'm going to tell you my timing. Usually when I do hit rock bottom, um, it, it won't take me max. And I, I think that also goes back to the person and their personality. Yes. It, it won't take me max if it's like horror. This is if it's like the worst ever, mm. more than 72 hours to feel it all. Oh, it took me 10 years. <laughs> we are 70, different. <laughs> Seriously. 72 hours, but th during those 72 hours, like, I feel it all. Like I cry. I um, I speak to friends. I speak to God a lot. I feel it all. I do whatever I can to get it out of my system. What are you doing? You're going on a rage? Like I mean, like, what's no. the? Are you ranting? Or what, are you asking questions? No, I, I sit with myself a lot. Because I cried for years. That didn't solve anything. So basically, I'm going to tell you what really, really, really helps me through this. Okay. It's speaking to God. For sure. Okay. For sure. Like I do it. Help. I, I do it when I am prostrating and I speak to him about everything. And after I finish speaking to him, I can't even explain the the comfort, mm. the serenity, the tranquility. Mm. It's hard to explain because mm. it's it just takes over you. Yeah. So uh, I guess you can say that's just something that is I won't be able to 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 pass it's on a to personal you. experience it's, it's a personal experience that happens with me because that emo that i guess spiritual connection is strong enough to help me recover mm. like i have this feeling but when which i've been implementing now for many years when i'm grateful yeah right that's my time with god uh -huh. where i'm just constantly having a chat on a personal level where i'm going i'm very grateful for the little things in life that's thank great. you for my nephews yeah. I appreciate that I can, you know, the laughs that they have, that they're happy. Mm. There's so many little things. And I have that connection and I have so much peace and happiness regardless of whatever is happening in the world. Yeah, that's but because it, God said if you're thankful, I will, I will increase you in goodness. 100%, oh. yeah. But when I'm going, th when I, I went through that kind of turmoil, oh, I wasn't joking. Actually, it was 10 years before I got back to full swing. So 72 hours, I really want to know. 72 hours, I'm telling you, 72 hours of like strong conversations, long conversations with God, literally. Like just praying, 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 asking him like to feel better, asking him to, to take care of all my life situations. I believing strongly that he will. Hmm. And then after that, like a big sense of serenity, tranquility, hope, 
just takes over and that's it. It's all gone. So when you did this... I'm not saying that it's yeah. all gone to an extent where I don't get moments sure. again of emotions where I'm feeling down. Yeah. Of course not. We're human. Yeah. But, but it, it, you're able to move. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes a challenge for me. Um, whatever it is that upset me, okay. I need to defeat it. And in order to, de to defeat it, I'm going to bounce. Okay. I'm going to succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach my goals. So I hit and bounce. Okay. I like to do that. And th those are th that's when big good things happen in my life. But very often we only realize this in hindsight. Yeah. Right? Only now you can you look back and go, wow, 2016, when I went through that yeah. tough day in August yeah. and I lost my shit and I made the decision to quit everything and get a one-way ticket to Dubai, mm -hmm. what an amazing decision yeah, that was. Yeah. Right? But and, that's hindsight. And, and that reminds me of um, the creator, the story of the creator of the Polaroid camera. I made a video about this, the Edwin Lan, the okay. guy who created the Polaroid camera. Please tell. So um, he was at a park uh, with his daughter, his little daughter, and he was, um, he was taking a picture of her and he loved her so much, like she was the precious thing in his life. And um, he wanted to take the picture for her and keep those in memory and she started crying, wanting to see the picture at, like on the spot. She was just bawling, like, I, I need to see these pictures right now, and, and this is horrible. And she was like a young six-year-old. And so he decided that, you know, these moments of sadness and despair and hopelessness he felt of not being able to make his daughter feel better or happy, he wanted to overcome that. So he locked himself in a room and decided to create a camera that would take the, the pictures out on the spot. So he used that moment of despair or mm -hmm. that moment of, of, or that challenge or that moment yeah. of sadness of not being able Seeing to... Seeing the pain in his daughter, yeah, right? Yeah. To create something. Yeah. That's, and that's when, you know, the, the word crisis actually means opportunity. Yeah, 100%. Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself your thoughts and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence and impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one. -on -one. Thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one. -on -one. You can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas and yourself with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. And what's interesting is the mindset we must choose to have, yes. right? Because if we don't choose to have that mindset of, mm -hmm. I need to get myself out of this, or yeah. I need to do something, or I just need to move, mm -hmm. then you'll end up just swimming in that misery. Exactly. Which many have, or, you know, including myself, even yeah. though I was trying, but 
it took me a long time and also, some people just stay in it yeah also the belief that mm. you need this obstacle in your life like the belief which that, is so difficult right yes so let's say that you um, went through a hard a heartbreak with someone and you're not you're not sure why this is happening to you that's the last thought I want to have is I believe this is necessary believing, I <laughs> believing it is necessary yeah will only happen like I said after you realize later on when you're with someone else that oh this was necessary mm. this bad relationship in my life was necessary yes. in order for me to be this in this successful relationship Correct. I am now Correct. so once you build that experience you realize that the obstacle I am in currently then is necessary so that later on in the future I do things right I may not know what for yes but there will be some good that You'll comes out of it. You'll know what for yeah. why because God's plan is better than mine. I like that that's yeah. awesome since you brought up the fact that you made this um, this video with the Polaroid story yeah and the fact that you make a lot of great content Thank uh, you. I was saying this between the recording and again I had <laughs> missed the fact that it wasn't recording um, there are a lot of challenges that people don't realize yeah. when it comes to creating content mm -hmm. creating content is important yes and then a lot of people will look at the content that you would create and go oh easy enough yes. right is she um, got in front of the camera, yeah. did a three-minute story, <laughs> boom shakalaka. You know what annoys me? When Off we go to the races. Someone comments up under a video, can I know what your mascara type is? Or like... It's called the backhand. I'm like, you know how hard I worked on this? Do you think asking about my mascara is going to make me feel good right now? As opposed to the moral of the story? Yeah. Um, but you know, that could be a business opportunity. Mascara yeah. brands, here you are. <laughs> but yes, I understand because yeah. the purpose of you making that video with exactly. a story and a moral is Yeah, that. and the amount of time and effort, I mean, there's a lot, there are a lot of content creators now. Yes. A lot of people that go on camera and speak their mind. Yes. A lot of people that are trying to help others with their own experiences and um, information that they want to deliver. But we have such short attention span Correct. now as humans. We don't have that time or energy to sit there and watch and listen to someone speak unless we're really, really Engaged. a big fan of them. Right. Or, um, and it's not really going to go viral and help others unless it is extremely engaging. So if we were to look at a video of yours, yes. so like the story of the, yeah. of the barber and, and you know, the stupid kid, yeah. so to speak, which was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Really, I still remember the story and that's how good it is. I've got a couple of questions, but one I'd like for you to take us through the process yeah. of how does that end product come about from inception point, I guess, from the thought, mm -hmm. your creative process, your writing, the recording, yeah. the editing. Um, for people to realize the reality of the importance of creating something of quality and then what does it take? Because we all want great things. Yeah. But then are we willing to do it? And it's very important to have that awareness. Mm -hmm. For this quality, these are the requirements. And now I have to ask myself the question, am I willing to go through this process yeah, or yeah, not? Exactly. But I'd love to know your process. Yeah. It's, it's a strategy that um, I was able to build over time by knowing the feedback and insights of my videos to see what was most engaging for people. Um, what did people need to hear the most? So initially you were just recording off the cuff? Yes. That was your initial that thing? That was trial and error. Okay. Um, and like I said, creativity is, is doing something before knowing how to well do said. it sometimes. Well said, yes. Um, and uh, did I just call myself creative? Yeah, okay, I did. I am creative. You are creative. <laughs> you are, 100%. Oh, um, yeah. So I was able to build that strategy over time of what I need to uh, do to make that uh, engaging video. Now, mm. mind you, it takes me to, to come up with the, the right topic and the right content and to record and edit a really good video. It, sometimes it takes me up to like one week first to write and then... For a three minute video. Uh, yeah, and then to record a, a three minute video, it may take me two, three hours because um, I do too many takes and then to edit it, it'll take me another two three hours because I have to also um, translate Just, I hate it but I have to do it mm. um, so all of that is something now I'm used to but um, it, it's a lot of effort and a lot of time that I put into it because I know that 
unless it's engaging, it's not going anywhere. So take us through your process. Yeah. You start off with a thought. Yes. Yeah, so I perhaps well, let's use the the barber and the. Sometimes I don't have a thought. Sometimes okay. I'm just I I'm. If, if I'm not sure what I'm going to be talking about, because you reach a, a, a level or an extent where you've, you've talked about a lot of topics, mm. you, um, you've made a, a lot of different videos. So to come up with something new, you just need to research. You just need to browse. Okay. You just need to, you know, um, feed your brain with different things. And then the idea comes. Okay. So the starting point is perhaps just look for things. Could be. Yeah. Or I look back at my videos and I say, what is something different that I can make that's engaging enough as this video or more. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the rules that I have set or some of the things that I learned over time, and obviously um, I, I read about, or not read, you can, see, you can say analyzed. Yes, um, I in terms analyzed, of structure and framework. Yeah, I analyzed what kind of videos are more engaging than others mm. and why. And I came up with my own strategy that um, a story is very engaging. Yes. Um, having a piece of info, um, a, a, a statistic or a reference is very engaging. Um, you know, having something that is, is motivational, um, but also the wording needs to be structured right, mm -hmm. is very engaging. Um, telling people something new they've never heard before is really engaging. Mm. To come up with all these things, yes. you can only imagine how much time it would take me to research and come up and, and come up with the right um, topic and and reference and story and connect it all together and make this uh, outcome or have this outcome. Which is why I'm asking because I know that it's not simple. It's not. Right? It's Yet not. people make an assumption that it's simple. And so it's important to realize that if you want to create creative yeah. content at, on any level, we start off, say, by researching. Because one excuse, it's easy to do it, and I've done it in the past, where, well, I'm just going to wait until my creative juices kick in and come up with something. No. And it used to be like that. So it would be, I'd have a thought today. Tomorrow I'd have 16 thoughts because I was on rapid fire yeah. and I was just taking notes down. And then I found myself not having a thought or I wasn't writing my thoughts for a whole month. Then I go, Kev, this is not a measured way you know, of being successful. And I heard individuals and I heard great folks saying, creativity is not something you wait for to arrive. Yeah. You create that environment you know for yourself. You know what? Procrastinators. How, why is it that we usually see the people that leave things to the last minute sometimes come up with great stuff? Mm -hmm. Why is it? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. A lot of the times, actually. Okay. Uh, people that wait and wait and wait and then do things like suddenly at the last minute, come up with something that's surprisingly great or surprisingly mm -hmm. different. That's because when you're going through that process you were talking about, having a thought here and a thought there and waiting it out, and then the next day you have a million other thoughts, what happens when we procrastinate, again, that's something that I, I researched to find out, um, is our subconscious is storing different thoughts and different yes. info. You think that it's that you're you're wasting your time. You think that you're just letting go of these thoughts that are coming and going in your head. But what's actually happening is they're all being stored. They're all being stored and getting cooked and formulated mm. until this great idea comes out that wouldn't have come out unless you went through that process of, of thought. And maybe Procrastinating is good. No. You've heard it here <laughs> first. Not saying it's good. Yeah. I'm saying that it... it Thinking through your thoughts. Thinking through your thoughts mm. and then doing things last minute, there's a reason for that. Mm. There's a reason sometimes that happens. Mm. But the idea is that thought or that, I, or that drive needs to haunt you. Mm. So um, let's say that you're, you, need to, you want to finish a certain project mm. and you keep procrastinating it, procrastinating it. Um, you're not just procrastinating it and not thinking about it at all. Mm. You're procrastinating it, but it, the thought of it is haunting you. Yes. You're, you're driving and all you're thinking about is this project. Mm. You're washing your hands and you're thinking about different thoughts about this project. Mm. Um, you're eating and you're just thinking how you can do this project. That is the thoughts that are getting cooked in your subconscious that will then you'll be able to come up with this, the, the light popping that, with a great idea. Get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs 
per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office on kevinabdurrahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. So that barber and the stupid kid, how, can you t take us through that cycle? How did it come out? Was it a thought? Was it something from a bit of research? So initially how I started... Where did the seed come from? Initially how I started was, was mainly stories and then moral and then uh, like uh, motivation okay. out of it. Um, that's initially how I started my videos because I knew stories were very engaging yes. and I knew that um, people enjoyed listening to stories mm -hmm. and I wanted them to listen to a story and then learn, learn and take something away from it. Um, so this video is actually, uh, I made this back in 2016. I, okay. I said this story back in 2016 and then the content after it in, in this recent one is completely different mm -hmm. because obviously it's improved. I looked back at the video that I made of the story and I'm like, the content after it is so weak, what was I thinking? But you had to do it to get to where you are today. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So um, I'm not, I am sure, I was researching different morals, mm -hmm. different stories mm. and reading them and then coming up with thoughts on how I can expand on the moral of the story mm. for people. Yes. And tell them something they can uh, benefit from. So it was just a story that I read, I liked it, and then formed content after it um, that expanded on the moral mm. and what people can take away from it. I'm glad that this, I didn't know about this, the fact that this story was actually something you had done. Yeah, you and know, you know, I was actually surprised that. there was one comment on the video um, of one of the people who have been following me ever since then and said, you've said this story before. And it was just one comment. And, Good follower. And that is the loyal fan. So um, thank you, props to you. <laughs> Off camera, I was mentioning to you that as a public speaking coach, mm -hmm. I work with a lot of world leaders. Right? I tell them, and they know already in many cases, the power and importance of telling stories because mm -hmm. it's engaging, it, it connects. Definitely. I remember, I've had a lot of things happen, but I remember that video of yours exactly. because of the story, the barber and the stupid kid, right? It's sticky, it's it connects. It's entertainment. Yes. Because that's what happens when you watch a show or a movie, you're looking at a story or a plot. Yes. And it, and it also can end up being, um, it, it, may, it can end up making you feel a certain way. Yes. And when, you, when you're touching on the emotions of people, that's when you're really um, building that connection with them. Mm. You can butcher a story. Yes. Or you can tell it well. Yes. I'd like to know, looking back at when you told the story and you know, how you finished it off, compared to when you redid it, Mm -hmm. What were the areas where you saw were weak in the hope that it would form as tips and thoughts for anyone that's watching or listening? Uh, when they want to tell a story, they can have some sort of a structure or format right. to perhaps follow right. you to save them time. Obviously, mm -hmm. when you do it, it's work in progress. Everyone looks back at their stories or the way they tell the story and can do better. Mm -hmm. That's when being a perfectionist comes in handy. Okay. Because I can say a story in monotone and not concentrate or emphasize on the context uh, and, the, and the tone of my voice and my facial expressions and be like, ah, oh, whatever, people will know, like, they'll still like the story. But then I'm a perfectionist enough to look back at, at the the, the story in my video, the way I said it, and be like, I don't like my tone of voice in that word. Mm. I don't like how I was, I don't like my facial expression in this. I can do better. I can do better. So it's, storytelling obviously is a, is a could be a talent and um, it's a skill that you, you build over time. Yes. And it, and it requires certain facial expressions, a tone of voice, even your eyes speak when you're telling a story. Yes. So, to keep people engaged as you're telling the story, you need to have that that change. You take change. it through the wave, right? Exactly. The wave of when emotions. it gets important, when it gets sad. When yes. Everything needs to talk. Mm. Your vo the tone of your voice, your eyes, your face, your hands. That's when it is okay to be a perfectionist. That's mm. when it's okay to look at the story and be like, if I was someone that's watch someone else watching mm. this video, am I going to be engaged when I listen to the story, or is, am I going to find it boring and, and shut the video off. Sometimes I finish a video and I watch it again mm. and I'm like, I'm bored. I got, I'm, this is boring. So I decide not to put it up. Okay. Whenever you communicate, you need to be able to engage the right. person. One of the things that I do when I'm creating content or I'm teaching my clients is to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Even if the questions are rhetorical, because if you're speaking to a camera or if you're speaking to an audience of a thousand people, mm -hmm and you only have five minutes and it's a keynote speech, you need to be able to engage the audience, but you don't have time to get their actual feedback. Like there's no time for a mic to exactly. go to that person. 
yet you need to keep them engaged and you can do that by asking rhetorical questions mm -hmm. because I'm going to feel that you're talking to me, you're asking me a question, I'm going to have to answer it, now I'm actually listening to you. Right. We diverged completely um, and it was the thought that you had made the decision to, t to book a one-way flight ticket mm -hmm. to come to Dubai. Yeah. I'd love to know that <clears throat> when you had hit rock bottom mm -hmm. and you went through that 72 hours. Yeah. And you know, no, you at that day it wasn't even 72 hours. Like, it was just a decision that I made on the same day. Okay. I'm going to Dubai, flight yeah. ticket, one way. I don't have anything waiting for me. Mm. Right? It's just, you arrived here. Take us through that journey to where yeah. you are today. So I had first, uh, I had um, newly graduated and landed my first job and thinking of starting my master's. And I was like halfway through my master's at that time. In Canada still. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then I took a break. I came here and I was still, you know, in my early 20s trying to figure out how I'm going to utilize my communications and media degree um, in a whole new different place. What I wanted exactly from this expertise. Mm -hmm. um, am I going to continue with corporate job? Is this where I am? Uh, is this where I see myself, you know, growing in a, in a corporate um, Am I going to utilize it differently? I never ever thought about uh, turning it into, uh, you know, or merging it mm. with my passion for public speaking and my videos that I do currently. During university, I knew that I wanted to continue with public speaking. Yeah, because you were studying communication and yeah, media, right? Yeah, and I knew because I started my own radio show on the side. Okay, um, like an internet radio? No, it was actually uh, it was in it was a show airing in um, the, a radio channel in the the city I'm in, Windsor, Ontario, and the border city to it, Detroit, cool. Michigan. And I did it in both Arabic and English, and I just did it as a passion. And I knew that I wanted to do this, and I was passionate about it because um, it gave me a you know a sort of satisfaction to know that I'm contributing to someone else's growth be it um, mentally, um, emotionally, um, you know, spiritually, whatever it is. Mm. So that is where my passion for that got stronger and built and, and built up. But I wasn't sure how or if I wanted to continue with that as a career. Yes. Right? I wasn't sure of the right path mm. on what I'm going to, to do to get there or yeah. how. Um, I was thinking more of the, I had the mindset of, wanting to be stabilized. Nine to five job, uh, set salary, making sure I'm stabilized. And I reached that, like I, I went through that experience. Um, and then I realized, no, <laughs> I am a person that cannot do something for a long time unless I'm very passionate about it and I love it so much. Mm. So will, whether it's corporate or not, yeah. it needs to be a, like, I will to have not that passionate do something drive. Just to be stabilized financially I okay. will not do that yeah even if it means that <laughs> I will go through financial strain I will not do it unless I love it mm. and I'll try to find a way to find that financial stability through what I love mm. it works for some people corporate works for some yeah, people I know it's, it's worked for many of my friends in actual fact if I could reflect in terms of what I wanted or how I wanted corporate would have actually worked really well for me with some clarity and some strategy Yes. But this is all in hindsight. I had the mistake of thinking I had to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. You don't have to be an entrepreneur exactly. if you have the clarity of the end goal you want to arrive to. Exactly. And had I given that some thought or had I had the mentorship and if I was listening, I would I was able to I would have been yeah. able to craft Yeah, so like we were talking about path. the mountain. Yeah. And once you figure out what your goal is or the peak is mm. or where it is on mm. your mountain, it'll be easier to figure out the path yeah. or which path. What's interesting to me is what you said, perhaps it was said in passing, but to me it's really interesting, is the fact that you're willing to go hungry as long as you're pursuing your passion. And that resonates with me. Yeah. Because I've been the kind of kid who's not the sharpest, who didn't have the strategy in place. The only reason I became a successful motivational speaker and a public speaking coach was pure tenacity, like a dog on a bone. Again, if I can go back, I would change a lot of things. Uh -huh. right? But I was just that dog on a bone going, I've picked this, I like it, I'm going to stick with it. Uh -huh. right? So I was stubborn, unfortunately, on the goal, which is correct, but unfortunately on the strategy as well, which is incorrect. Uh -huh. Had I had that kind of mindset of this is your goal, your mountain, realize that there are potential for more paths, even mm -hmm. paths you might not want to take, 
But if you consider these, you'll be able to arrive at that point because that is the most important thing for you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, what sacrifice beyond the willingness to accept financial loss or not have financial stability have you had to make to be able to be where you are today? Um, because we very often don't realize. I lost realize. friends. Okay. I lost friends because some people weren't able to understand the kind of growth that I have to go to to be in that field. You evolved at a different I, rate. Exactly. Mm. I evolved at a different rate, at a different pace. A lot of my friends, or a few, not a lot, didn't understand that the way that I'm evolving is necessary. Mm. They're used to me a certain way, um, in a certain image, uh, you know, with a certain energy. But I had to evolve and I had to change a lot of things in order to get to what I need. Mm. But I remained loyal and I remained with the same principles and values and um, the, the good characteristics I need to contribute enough to that friendship. Yes. But it just wasn't what they're used to. Yeah. And as you so, grow, your circle just changes because exactly. yeah, you need people who are on your wavelength. Yes. doesn't make anyone a bad person. Yeah. It's just we're vibrating at a different... Yeah. And um, for some people, like media... For some people, it's a controversial thing. They, are, they don't understand um, that there is a very good side to media as well. Mm -hmm. um, there, is, there is a negative, very negative side to media, but there is also a good side to media that if you know how to utilize it properly, mm -hmm. you can use it to contribute to others. You yes. can use it to contribute to yourself. You can use it as a business. You can use it in many wonderful ways. Sure. And when people are really stuck on that mindset that, um, no, the, this field is horrible. You can't just, you know, maintain it as There's a career. There's no goodness. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be hard because they carry different values and different perspectives. And um, it's just, there's no alignment. Mm. This leads me to the thought of misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Right, we often have misconceptions about people whom we don't know, or you know, yeah. fields or in situations and so forth. What misconceptions did you have of, say, for example, this domain, or misconceptions you might have had about success or happiness when you were younger as opposed to now? Yeah, because I know that in 10 years' time it will also change. Uh -huh. I ask these questions because I had misconceptions about my life. I thought that that field, of, that the field of media, was very financially rewarding. Okay. Uh, I thought that um, people who, you know, were in this field were all rich, mm. <laughs> and you know, it would be very financially rewarding. And and I realized that it's the complete opposite, actually, right. to an extent. Yeah. Fame is not doesn't equate to financial success. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Because there, there are a whole no. heap of people on social media that are famous mm. and unfortunately they're broke yes yes, and yes extremely wealthy individuals are not even on social media exactly. so the two can coexist but they don't correlate yes yeah and that is something that i figured out after being behind the scenes myself mm. right um i was able to once to you're swimming it in it you realize exactly yeah what excites you about the future like so from your perspective and the way you've come into it being youthful how do you see the future like what are you interested in what excites you what excites me about the future is being more settled. In what sense? Um, in every sense. Okay. Whether it being... You're more settled, as in calmer? In, in every aspect of life. Okay. Whether it being emotionally settled, um, being financially settled, being um, career-wise I'm settled. I've built my ground. Now I'm in the process, in my journey still. I, there comes, there's, a, there's a time in your life where you need to be everywhere. You cannot have a sense of settlement. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're someone that wants to reach big big things and big dreams. Yes. Oprah said if if you if you're doing your job without being paid for it, you're on the path of success. Mm. And obviously if you're not being paid for something and you're just doing it and you're everywhere, you still don't you still haven't reached settle, settlement or stabilization. Mm. So what excites me about the future and I know this will happen inshallah for me is um, that sense of settlement from every aspect of life. Mm. Like I, I'm not right now I Let's say my um, personal life. I'm not. I, I'm single, so uh, I, I'm settled with myself. But later on, I'll be having that sense of settlement as building a family. Yes. A uh, career-wise, 
I'm still in the process of thinking about having a business, making a book, um, being on different stages, different countries. There's no settlement, but I'm still in the journey and I'm excited to reach that mm, settlement. Mm. It's like when someone tells you, I'm in the journey and I can't wait to be retired. But like that doesn't mean that they're going to give up their passion. It yes. just means that they're going to become more settled and reach that where they've hit their milestones mm. and reach that um, tranquility yes. you know, and, and a peace. Yeah, but you've got that kind of hope and faith that you know that you're doing things yes. moving I, in that I'm, direction. I, I'm loving the um, unsettlement or unstabilization I'm in now because I know that later on, yes. um, if, I, if I'm not like this now, I'm yes. going to regret it. And I'm going to be like, I have so many opportunities to travel, to be in different places, to try different things, um, to, to figure out what I want, what I love, to have experience with different people, but I chose to just be in my comfort zone all the time and I chose the settlement. Um, and it's like, well, I wish I did this. Mm. I wish I wish I gave myself more time and I don't want that. So I'm happy where I am. Yes. It's you're like sowing the you're, seeds, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like if, if you if you're trying to get to a certain destination, right? And the road is empty, okay, you're gonna be concentrate you're gonna be comfortable, obviously, mm. if there is no traffic. You're gonna be more comfortable with yourself. You're you're gonna get your your foot's gonna get used to the gas at where it's at. Yes. Um, you're gonna get maybe a little drives. You're gonna to want to take a nap on the side. Yes. There's no drive, right? Mm. But if there's traffic, you're more alert, and you want to get there at a certain time. You're more alert. Mm. You're you're hitting different roads, um, figuring out, seeing different cars, um, learning about the different speed limits in different roads. Um, you know, taking different routes, seeing. Because there's traffic, there's things happening for you. She sounds so. like a scary driver. You are, aren't you? <laughs> I was going to say, she sounds like a scary driver. Not all at right. all. Sure, sure. Yeah. No, I'm not saying be crazy, I'm just saying there is more for you when there is traffic. Yeah. Yeah. You're like honking, mm. and you're like, you know, yeah. what can Get out of the way, I've got a show yeah. to get on. Nine in the morning, damn it, Kev. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate that you made it here. Thank you. Um, thank you for being candid. Um, I. Um, which you do I anyway. It. Yeah, thank it. you. Which you do anyway with your videos, which is why I wanted to have this conversation with you because I get that from your videos and I get a lot from you know mm -hmm. uh, watching your videos, which is excellent. I have no doubt you'll you'll arrive at your settlement in, in the different <laughs> directions, but you said it really well. I think some people might not realize what you said in passing is that willingness. You know, having that willingness to try different things, yes. you know, to sow the seeds, not knowing where it's going to go, mm -hmm. but not having that regret. Exactly. Uh, because the, la the worst thing you could have is to look back at your life yeah. and go, I had the opportunity to try things and what, I let yeah. my fear yeah. or discomfort? Exactly. But I also want to send a message to people who are not very ambitious, mm. to people who are okay with being settled, are okay with being on the empty highway and just, you know, you know having that um, flat line. Mm -hmm. If you are happy mm -hmm. with that, and you're seeing other people and you're comparing yourself to other people who are more of go-getters or, or ambitious people and it makes you feel um, it makes you feel less of yourself don't feel less of yourself because they are happy with their journey and yes. you should be happy with yours mm. as long as you are fulfilled yes if you are on a flat line and you're not fulfilled that then there's a problem mm. but if you're not fulfilled only because of society's pressure or only or, or you're feeling a sense of um uh, you, you can say like uh negativity mm. or pressure mm. only because of society or because you're comparing yourself to others you shouldn't mm. you should just be um happy where you are if if and that's if, what you want. And if you're going to do something, make sure you're doing it for you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're on that empty road and you're finding that comfort where and you are. this is Highway 66 for yeah, you. Yeah. Then enjoy. if you're happy that way, then yeah. why not? Mm. Right? If you're not hurting anyone and you're just being you and you're settled and comfortable, then why not? Mm -hmm. um, but if you're ambitious, you need to choose Go the traffic lane. Yeah. Yeah. What would be your advice in a world that is distracted, in a world that is bombarded in every way, you know, pings, dings, what have you, uh, if you had the world's attention for 60 seconds, someone that's watching, someone that's listening, uh, perhaps a younger version of you or yeah. someone that resonates with your voice, what would just be from what you know so far, a distilled uh, set of thoughts to help, you know, raise either their awareness yeah. or to just give them a better shot at being the best that they can be? Yeah. Um, 
believe, look at the camera. Yes. Believe that every person you sit with, even if they're lower than you in um, education, younger than you in age, um, they have much less experience than you, whoever you're with, okay? Even if their values don't align with yours at all, even if you're complete opposites, believe that the perspective they have is right mm. to an extent. It's true for them. It helps you listen. Mm. Once you listen and you see other people's perspective, who you're around in your life, you will build on to your perspective. Mm. You'll be able to um, figure out how to act and interact with different people, mm. how you need to change your perspective for different things, yes. make the right decisions in different situations. So you must believe that everyone's perspective is correct for them. Yes. Um, according to their background, their experience, uh, where they grew up, how they think, for them it's correct. You shouldn't say that it's different than mine, so it's not correct. No, for you it's correct because you grew up a certain way, you had different experiences, they grew up a certain way, they had different experiences, so it's correct for them, your perspective's correct for you. Take what you need out of it. Yes. So listen mm. to, others people's, to other, other people's perspectives and believe it is true to an mm. extent. Because when you listen, you end up learning something. Yes, right? and respect their differences. Mm. Respect, yeah, mm. for sure. Mm. Well said. 500 years from now, long after we're both gone, how would you like your legacy to read? You know, we'll say Nur al-Huda was, what would be that ideal legacy? Uh, like great, great, great grandkids would, would be able to look, I don't know if it's books or... I don't know if it's so much or, a legacy that mm. I, I want to hold as much as knowing that day by day I'm contributing something mm. that, con that, is, that is helping someone grow. Mm. Um, it's just a day by day thing. Mm. It's not an image I'm looking for or a name or a legacy or it's more of, a, of something that like... You're a contributor. Yes. Mm. So uh, wherever I am in the world, my voice is somewhere that's helping someone. Mm. That's just something that I want to know is happening. That's super nice. And you're doing that, I'm sure, to, you know, it will continue to, uh, to grow. Really Thank cool. You. For those who are watching and listening and they vibe with you and, you know, what you do and you should be following her, what's the best platform for folks to follow you on? IG, Instagram. IG. Yeah. So with it, right? Instagram. IG, yeah. It's the, it's the one that's going now yeah okay yeah. super we'll put all the links um on the show notes um thank you very much thank I, you yeah, for having yeah. me i really enjoyed this i'm I glad really you did, did. i'm glad you did fruitful. thank you um we had some laughs on and off the camera because there were moments where we were just <laughs> talking and it wasn't recording um yeah. but um, i kind of just already laid that out at the start so she was expecting it um folks whether you're watching or listening please do it a second time I always believe that whatever you go through, or one of the things I've learned that has helped me immensely in my life is I've learned so much reading a book, watching a video, or listening to, say, a podcast a second time. Because so there's something about a second time where you pick up on things you missed out the first time. And Noor said so many things, uh, perhaps in a way that's matter of fact, in a way that might have been subtle. Maybe you just missed it because you were thinking about a point she mentioned and then she said a second thing, but you were still thinking about the first one. You'll pick up a lot the second time around. I make the summary notes available on kevinabderrahman.org forward slash podcast. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. If there were thoughts that were shared and you want to continue the conversation, make sure you put them out somewhere. Uh, we'll put in the links for Noor on of her IG or all the other platforms as well. So make sure you follow her because I follow Noor and I find her stories to be um, both inspirational, interesting, and um, they're just nice. And I feel that if um, one is able to think after going through a piece of content, whether it's written or video, that has a lot of value. So I might not necessarily get an answer if I'm lost or if I'm seeking something, but the fact that it makes me think. Perspective. Yeah, that perspective. Just the fact yeah, one can, you can allow someone to just think deeper, mm -hmm. that's really valuable. Yeah. So thanks for that. Thank you so much. Uh, our show is not to uh, show off. You know this by now. We hope that with every episode, with every guest, we hope to help you get inspired, get informed, and get going. I'm certain we did that with this episode. Um, wherever you are, whoever you are, remember, be kind, be ambitious, 
be grateful. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It. Alrighty. Yay! Oh, she had her look on. Did you see that? She was like... <laughs> I did. <laughs> this is great. Thank you so much, Kevin. Glad. I really Glad. enjoyed it.